Hello everyone, I'm High Treason and we're going to have a look at a curiosity from the past today. It's not something you'd, you'd see in uh, any normal modern computer. There are, there are specialised boards for this kind of thing around but yeah, very very obscure now for very specialist applications. So uh, certainly not like this. And uh, yeah, we're going to be using my Pentium system. We know what it looks like by now. And uh, I think we'll be fairly familiar with the internals. Nothing much has really changed. I might keep this case and just cut that piece of metal out so I can fit the processor in. And uh, it does have a different sound card now, so I should probably say thanks to Retfink for selling me a new Pro Audio Spectrum 16 uh, for a good price. You might notice if you're watching this that that's not the one you sold me. Uh, I like the FM output on this one better. It's a bit louder, which works better in here. The one you sold me is going to my Pentium Overdrive, which has needed one for a long time, and it will do much better in there. Also, thanks to Brassic Gamer, who I did a trade with, you'll notice there's now a SCSI controller in place of that shitty IDE controller we were using that never worked properly. So yeah, this SCSI card's awesome. It's not really period correct, but it's close enough, and uh, included in the trade was a 4 gig hard drive, which you probably can't see very well as well as an AT power supply which is going to be very useful for powering that mystery board we glanced over in my socket 4 ramblings. Impressively a few of you seem to actually get what the mystery board was and uh, I was quite surprised by that I thought I didn't think people would re as many people would realize so I was, I was very impressed by that. Anyway let's get down to having a look at the piece of hardware we're talking about today. trained I might have latched on to the fact the system has a Roland SCC1 installed presently well, this is just temporary uh, this card for anyone who doesn't know is a board with a rather horrid little synthesizer on board but it does have a somewhat usable MIDI output as long as you don't take it too far which is really you need to be working in moderation here big time but it's certainly usable and that is what we've been doing. We've been using this as a sequencing system as the ports on my old Digi2 are no longer working and for that task this card suffices just fine and I figured eh, as I've got it I may as well use it for something but it will be coming out at a later time so don't get used to it being in here. Otherwise not much else has really changed here. I still have to swap the floppy drive over at some point and I'd like to change the I.O. card eventually, but this is months away, I would have thought. It's not really annoying me yet. And the floppy I have a spur, the Hurst card, I, I can get one, they're not really hard to find. No rush. Anyway, what we're looking at today is this thing. It's a video card, and immediately you're going to notice this peculiar appendage it seems to be growing. MVP 1100 here. Well, as I'm confident my viewers can read, due to the video title... I'm sure you know what it does already to some degree. Under that is a VGA card, a diamond branded Trio 64V Plus with some extra connectors. These are probably what S3 would call the scenic highway and they're used to interface with that module. The card features 2 megabytes of RAM and it's generally the same as any other Trio 64V Plus in that it's a fast 2D card, it's really good in DOS it offers GUI acceleration under Windows and some simple video acceleration in regards to things like color conversion and scaling but nothing too fancy. Uh, this mostly applies to things like AVI video files, the sorts you'd get on the Windows 95 CD-ROM. It looks funny seeing that in Windows 3.1. Windows 3.1's pissed. Yeah, that's playing on this uh, this system with this video card, so that seems quite promising, but, I mean, this is AVI, so it's not really getting into its own here. Still, the, the good vibes are further reinforced by the fact the card is called the Stealth Video 2001, so, hey, I guess this is kind of what we're supposed to do with it, right? The module, however, only seems to have 512k of RAM on board, and a Scenic MX2 chip next to an S3 Sonic DAC, used to change the decoded audio signals into analog. The S3 Scenic decoders were 
S3's attempts to make an affordable device to do what it says, decode MPEG video. Computers at the time often didn't have the horsepower to do this kind of thing smoothly, and whilst the Pentium here might just have the balls to do it to an acceptable level, I'm certain the card probably does it better, or it should, and it allows some room to let the computer do other things. It appears, however, that the CPU still has to demux or demultiplex the video to some degree, and I'm sure it has to do most of the work for the audio. This isn't much overhead, given we know this system can decode MP3 files just fine. Interesting that audio from decoded MPEG streams comes from the module and not the sound card, and therefore it must either have its own speakers, or else interface to the sound card somehow, either via the outer jack on the ass end of it, or through an internal connector. The CD pass-through isn't working properly on mine, so I instead have the decoder connected to the AUG's input on my PASS16, and the CD-ROM drive connected to the CD-ROM connector as you would expect. A rather intriguing feature of this, and one I doubt S3 didn't give too much consideration, although it may have been a factor in why it does the audio side as well, is that on paper the MVP1100, or Motion Video Processor 1100 as Diamond call it, can produce audio at 48kHz sample rates where the PAS16 cannot, and it's probably worth mentioning that the All32 from around this time, and I think even the All64 weren't capable of this sample rate. What this means is that provided the sound card isn't converting the signal back to digital somewhere, and so far as I know it doesn't because the PASS has uh, an analog mixer on it according to the part numbers, we'll actually be making audio come out of the sound card at higher sample rates than the sound card's really capable of. Nothing too clever, but it's an odd thought. This concept of adding decoders lasted a while, and it isn't too uncommon to find creative or real magic branded cards which can decode DVD video discs, and these were usually used on uh, Celerons or Pentium 2s uh, if people ever put them in. There are even real magic MPEG-1 decoders, uh, usually for ISA, and if you get adventurous you might even find satellite broadcast hardware with similar capabilities all on one card. Uh, VGA and TTL output. I'd love drivers for this thing, it's a really interesting piece of hardware, but yeah, I doubt they made many and that company's long gone. Probably made worse by the fact they never actually offered the drivers for download. They, they were like an exclusive disc that came with the software for the card and it seems to have been under some very strange licenses. It, maybe, you know, it's one of those things, I don't think you'll ever get hold of it and it's going to be in a grey area if you do. As is quite obvious, this module plugs into the stealth card, and most likely only this particular model of stealth card, or some very similar ones, before requiring very specific drivers to operate at all. They're a bit heavy handed to be honest. If you have one of these cards and want to use it then, you must use the diamond drivers. I tried some Cardex ones and the card uses the exact same parts, they seem identical on paper, the drivers don't work at all, so some alterations have to have been made by each vendor, probably for no reason other than to stop using drivers from another vendor, and I find that quite annoying to be honest. However, the diamond drivers work, and they're, they're not particularly intrusive or anything, so yeah, I just didn't know where they were at the time I've since found them. If we start up the computer, Anyway, starting Windows. Well, the instructions say we should disable the network. I have had little trouble leaving it running, but it seems more likely to give you an out of memory or some access problem in this case, so it's probably wiser just to follow the instructions to use that end switch and avoid the potential hassles it might cause. 
Uh, plus, this is Windows 3.1, so yeah, who knows what might happen if we ignore the instructions. Uh, I mean, it, it might blow up or something. I wouldn't put it past this thing. Anyway, the drivers install quite a few devices into the driver applet. Uh, MCI stuff mostly, and they need video for Windows 1.1 already installed. Still, that's done, and putting that aside... Teddy bears? Who would put something like that there? What the... <laughs> is this for little girls or something? I mean, that's this who plays with teddy bears, isn't it? I mean, what the hell is wrong with that? Oh, man, that's... I, I'm not having that. Oh, shit, shit. That, that's fucking wank, mate. Yeah, now that's better. Anyway, we could mess with the diamond control panel and even play videos in it, but I, I'm really not a fan of that application or doing it that way. Uh, luckily, the whole thing, being an MCI device, works under Windows Media Player. <laughs> yeah, this is the ancestor of that bloated piece of crap nobody uses today. It, it actually used to be quite decent. You can see what devices it supports in the device menu there. First up, here's an attempt at playing a video CD, or VCD. Unfortunately, I haven't had much luck with this up to now. I'm confident it should work, but I'm burning discs on a relatively recent piece of software that seems to use some later specification of uh, the video CD format, which this card might not be compatible with. It's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'd like to find some of my you know, official video CDs like, that you could actually buy from... Uh, from off the shelf back then. I think those will work fine. We already know this thing plays AVI files just fine. Uh, Microsoft Video 1 format from the high performance folder on the Windows 95 CD-ROM. I always liked this one a lot. The art style and the music, just awesome. I mean, check it out. probably worth noting I doubt the MVP 1100 is actually doing anything there. I, I suspect this one's done entirely by the S3 Trio 64V Plus and the Pentium processor because the MX2 is really just an MPEG decoder. It doesn't do anything else. Now I guess we should then play an MPEG file directly. And to be honest this thing actually impresses me. It, it looks cheap and nasty and Nothing about the way it was written up or the way it looks fills me with confidence. I honestly thought it would be crap. And I got it for the novelty value because it was cheap. But it seems to be really good. The quality is really nice and the video is smooth. I mean, look at that. There's Pussycat, Alan Gribble. They're on the right. Son David at the controls. Robin Herrick. Team Overseer. Yeah, now, comparing that to Zing, it's sure as hell doing a pretty good job there. I'm impressed. The audio decoding's really good as well, and it stays in sync even if you make the system stutter by going to other applications. So, hey, they weren't lying. I'm, I'm very impressed by that. It's doing exactly what it says it does. Note how when the windows minimized, the icon on the task top actually displays a thumbnail of the video. A moving thumbnail. Yeah, wow, I like that a lot. That's awesome. Anyway, let's have a proper listen to the sound quality. Now, I had trouble with this because all of my stuff sounds kind of grainy. I mean, well... It's not, not a great example there, so 
it was, well, I could play some old 90s songs, but then I'm going to get my ass bit by copyright. So now I'd like to say a special thanks to another YouTuber. And, uh, well, let's just have a listen to this, shall we? Yeah, now that's nice. Special thanks to another YouTuber, Synthetic Machines, for giving me permission to use this here. It is copyrighted content, but I have permission to use it. And yeah, if you like that music and you're into old synthesizers and stuff, you really probably should follow those annotations and go and check that guy's stuff out. Because whilst he doesn't upload very often, when he does, it's generally awesome. So I'd go and check that out. And yeah, thanks, dude. Now, for recording that, I used the socket on the back of the MPEG card to give you the best and cleanest quality of the signal, as noise tends to get into the past 16, and I don't really feel like playing with the mixer trying to get rid of it. They are fairly noisy cards. It doesn't bother me that much, probably because my colossal ground loop's noisy enough already, but it would be an unfair representation of both the S3 card and the guy's work to have just lazily jammed it in the back of the sound card there. Before somebody asks me, no, the card can't decode SVCD because they use MPEG-2 and the card doesn't support MPEG-2. So, yeah, no point in trying that. It isn't going to do anything. The, the name, though, S3 Scenic, all I can think of is the Renault Scenic. And they have negative connotations there. The bloody fat, ugly taxi driver's car, those things. I mean, the car's, like, ugly. The taxi driver probably is, but, I mean, the, bloody hell, I mean, just why call it the Scenic, seriously? Oddly, though, the, the card's quite the opposite of that. I've seen creative and real magic ones in use, and I've seen numerous of them out there. I've never seen a Scenic actually being used, though, and it's a shame, as this one sure seems to be pretty good. Yeah, I genuinely did think this thing would be absolutely crap. And uh, I'm, I'm really glad it isn't. I'm very pleasantly surprised because I'm sure we all know how disappointing it is, that, that feeling of disappointment when something doesn't perform very well. Um, it's There's moments when it stutters and kind of slows down a little bit. You can tell the frame rate drops when more activity starts going on with more robots trying to get you and the room's getting bigger and things like that. When there's more chaos on the screen, it, it does tend to seem to hit... Um, there seems to be a hidden performance there. It actually feels to me like a Pentium 133. One can't help but wonder if some adventurous programmer could come up with a script that would allow you to download and watch YouTube videos like on the fly, like actually convert them. I expect it would be a slow process. You'd have to type in the URL and wait for it to download and convert, but in theory it would be possible. Uh, unfortunately, my skills don't extend this far, so uh, we can't really see that, and we'd have to do everything manually. There's little else to say about it, besides it is quite novel to see Windows 3.1 doing this. I mean, we could watch movies on this thing in decent quality now. Plus, if you put on old Eurodance music videos or old TV shows, it makes the contents of the screen go into 90s overload. I ain't leaving yet, and you can stop counting me down because I done told you once, son. Please, we son. got a damn problem oh. because I ain't gonna listen to oh. no more. That's, that ain't gonna work. You get out of here. Just look at that. Seriously, you can't really get much more 90s than that. Work to the extreme, dude. Whoa, my name is totally tubular, man. Whoa. Gnarly. The diamond in control tool shows no dropped frames, but then it would. So, yeah, I don't know how much I actually trust the counter up there, because I wouldn't put it past them to just rig it. I can say, however, that the tearing you see on the videos is from my 50Hz capture device undersampling the signal on the fly, and it's not visible on the monitor connected to the card. However, you will notice something when we move the window. The, the outline of the border turns green, which implies a pink object behind it, even though it's actually over the video. 
and if we move the window we do see a quick flash of pink. Now why would that be? What I think is happening is that the Trio 64 is drawing nothing there, or at least a pink box, and the Scenic is either hurl punching into the analogue signal, like subtitles on an older TV system, or else it's writing to the frame buffer or some other buffer somewhere. The available information appears to suggest that some other buffer is used over a proprietary Scenic Highway, which seems to be an 8-bit digital interface, and that Trio might do some other processing to it if the user so desires, such as if you maximise the window, it, it may be used to scale the signal up. It's interesting to think though that the images you see might not really be coming directly from the GPU. This was not uncommon at the time in principle, with either having a cable outside to punch into the VGA signal like real magic, or using the feature connector internally for similar reasons. And somebody might think of 3DFX cards, but they don't punch into the signal, they just switch the two-dimensional signal off when they're accelerating. So those aren't similar, and I figured that was worth mentioning so nobody gets confused. I feel it would be beyond the scope of this video to go into detail on the pros and cons of all the various methods available, but I do believe that this digital interface, the Scenic Highway, is probably the best possible way to do things here, as it negates any generation loss or signal degradation that would happen through other means that were used at the time. Today, I'm sure such devices would just be lazy and feed data back onto the system bus, probably doing a full round trip through main memory and being generally inefficient just because the computer's fast enough to stomach it. Hey, just because the computer's faster isn't really an any excuse to be lazy. And you wonder why things are so bloated now. Every programmer who comes along is like, oh well, it's only 10 more cycles. It isn't going to make that much difference, the system's fast enough, and then every programmer on every layer of software does that. I would bet you're probably losing quite a high percentage of performance on these newer computers now. So what would be the next step here? Well, I don't know, I mean, this thing... We've already never enough max this machine out, but i got to admit, I'm kind of tempted to somewhere a long way down the line, I'm, I really aren't going to be doing it any time soon, to get an old capture board. A preferable one that uses the feature connector, and uh, I don't know, maybe get some Premiere Pro going there just for the hell of it. You know, it could be fun to mess with, uh, bring back memories of the old days when things weren't always as smooth as they are now. Having said that, mo modern capture cards are a little bit of a pain in the arse, to be honest. So yeah, that might be something to do. I mean, we've gone gone overboard with this thing already. We might as well just go fully overboard now. Extreme, dude. I mean, extreme. Yeah, that's uh, probably about it. You, the last things of note, someone's going to ask, you can do NTSC as well as PAL. Some of the videos we used today were NTSC, but you can't really go very far outside of the video CD specifications, I wouldn't have thought. Uh, I haven't tried too much, but I imagine there's not really a, a massive margin there before the frame rate will start dying out and stuff. I may have to experiment, see just how far it'll go before it starts dropping frames. It may be somewhat system dependent though, of course with the CPU doing half of the work. Because I do imagine there probably would be issues with memory as well, because even when it's running normal, if, if you have a couple of things up and you, you get out of memory messages, and Windows 3.1 really isn't cut out for this kind of thing. Probably probably work a lot better under Windows 95, actually, if you uh, want to really multitask with the machine. Uh, it wasn't quite that great in uh, Windows for work groups yet. But in summary, it is a really good little, little module. It, it does its job very, very well, and I am impressed by it. I don't really know what use it would be in today's world, unless you have some very, very peculiar desire to play video files on a really old computer system, which evidently I can totally sympathise with. There is something pretty novel about being able to do that, and I'd be really interested to see how far back it would scale. A 4 at 6 with like a, a really, really slow SX in it or something. Um, perhaps. I don't know that it'd work without a floating point unit with the CPU doing the multiplexing, but we, maybe someday I'll try. Uh, I, re I really don't know past that point whether 
it's going to be be too useful to, to people though, isn't it? and it's it's not everybody's cup of tea this sort of thing but I am a video guy so yeah it, it appeals to me greatly and uh, who knows uh, it may be useful in the future but I dare it I think it's just a novelty device by now I suppose if you were really really desperate you could probably watch grainy porn videos on it uh, yeah so now we're done with that I don't know, I don't have too much to say at the end of this one. I can't be bothered to really update people on why I am, because nothing too major has changed. Uh, there has been an issue, but that's a separate video, and I'm sure I'm going to do tremendous damage to my channel with that, but hey, you know, I'm happy to own up to my own mistakes and shit. Uh, other parties evidently aren't, and uh, their actions aren't going to have any real effect on me, so yeah, <laughs> it sucks to be them, I guess. Right, well, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I still don't know how many videos we've got left in here, and it's been very difficult to produce anything. I mean, I'm, we do have problems. My workstation hates the warm weather. It's incredibly warm at the moment. I'm having real problems controlling the temperature uh, on there. Uh, the camera is, my fix isn't here yet, so we've currently got pieces of wire tape together, and it's been powered by a USB port. There's, I don't have a microphone really, I really should fix it or replace it at some point, but I don't think we're going to do that with 49 pence in the bank again. Uh, yeah, it's been, I've been pretty broke the past few months, so uh, well, it'll sort itself out. I'm, I'm waiting on a move and uh, hopefully get that fucking Xeon going within the next few months. Uh, I have a plan there. I, I probably shouldn't, but I do plan to throw some of my disturbance grant A on the basis it is some I need, really. I mean, what else am I going to do? So, yeah, uh, might look at doing that. But who knows, and who knows how far away that is now. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. A anyways, I, I better get on with filming shots of the system and probably recording the voiceover again. I'm not sure I'm entirely happy with it. And, uh, yeah, whatever else I've got on my to-do list, editing and rendering this damn thing in this weather, which is going to make this room even sweatier than it already is. So, I'm High Treason. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm going nowhere. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I will see you again when I can and when I have something else to do here that isn't going to use up too much time and uh, be too difficult to produce because if I'm not enjoying it I'm not going to do it but hey you know I've probably had fun doing this I will have done or you won't be seeing it so yeah I'll see you around uh, thanks for watching What the hell? I don't get it. Every, I, seriously, I, I look at myself on camera that always looks off center. It's it's not. It, it, it looks fine in the mirror and everything. It's just on this one camera. I, even my 808, it looks straight. But yeah, before this video ends, I figure I've got to tack on the end. I won't go in through and re recording it now. And uh, this damn camera. It's held up by my surfer. I, I don't have a tripod. I haven't had one for ages. Bro. It's only five quid. I got my money's worth out of it. I don't think you've ever seen this room from this angle before. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, you might not see it from that angle again because. Uh, yeah, I now have. Uh, next week I'm signing for another house and. Uh, Sure, I just saw movement behind me. Where's my bloody bopping stick? I mean, that fucker out. But uh, oh, it's my shadow. Fucking paranoid or something. I don't know. Fuck knows. Anyways, yeah. Uh, I have mixed feelings about it, but we'll go over them in a video about that. I I actually did take my auto 8 with me when I went to look. Re oh, man, this stuff pongs. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it wasn't working, so. I don't know what was up with it. Oh, oh shit, spillage. Give me a second.
Oh, ooh. yeah, got stomach medication. I don't know if you think my voice sounds a bit different in this. I think it's uh, a little bit less raspy than it has been. It's probably because my stomach's not eating away my bloody vocal cords and stuff anymore. But I figure this was worth a mention because it's, uh, I'm certain people here know that smell, you know, when you burn out some electronics and it, it, it burns a circuit board. That's what it smells like. It's actually what it tastes. There is a smell of like cheap whiskey because it, it's got quite a lot of alcohol in. It's about a quarter of a pint of beer's worth in what I've just taken or something. But, uh, yeah, under that there's a, a smell and a real taste of burning circuit board. It's, it's quite interesting. Uh, it's uh, not the worst taste in the world, but... Ugh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think they should release drinks this flavour, that's for certain. Uh, it tastes damn sight better than the stuff my stomach was regurgitating, though. No, gotta say. So, yeah, I don't know how much more of this place you're gonna see. But, uh, yeah, uh, even then, we have issues, but again, I'll go over them in that video. I'm going to the oil on my hands now. Uh, th this isn't the time or the place, so I'm going to get the fuck out of here for now. You know what, bollocks, I'm going with the fast take. I can't, I can't compact this down anymore. So, uh, yeah, I'm high treason. I'm probably going to go to sleep, to be honest. <laughs> this is a few days after the end the rest of the video. But, uh, yeah, whatever, I'm out of here. I'll see you around. I expect more boring moving vlogs for the foreseeable future. Fuck's sake, I don't even bloody care anymore. Fucking hell. You know what, bollocks, I'm going with the fast take. I can't, I can't compact this down anymore. So, uh, yeah, I'm high treason. I'm probably going to go to sleep, to be honest. <laughs> this is a few days after the end the rest of the video. But, uh, yeah, whatever, I'm out of here. I'll see you around. I expect more boring moving vlogs for the foreseeable future. Fuck's sake, I don't even bloody care anymore. Fucking hell.